Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another beautiful episode of Fake News Show. I'm your host, Frank Donga. You know how we do it on this show. Misinformation, disinformation, or fake news. That's what we tackle here. By telling you how to identify it, how does it affect you, how to report it, you know, how to, you know, protect yourself from malicious information around, all over the place, social media, on conventional media, from authorities, everywhere. We talk about it on this show, you know, and we have interesting guests we have been bringing every week to talk about topical issues, all right? Stay with us, we'll be right back. After this break, we'll talk about today's topic. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's still Fake News Show, and uh, today we're going to be discussing the youth and fake news. Every time, everywhere you turn, you always hear fake news. And when you hear fake news, you hear social media. It's like they are twins. And when you hear social media, the youth are not far behind. It's almost like people tend to blame the youth for the peddling of fake news, that as if the youth are solely responsible for misinformation and disinformation. Is this true? Is this so? If it is true, why is it so? If it is not, then why that imagery? Why that conception or misconception, rather? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We have somebody from CDD West Africa, youth like you and I. Ibrahim Al-Hassan, or Al-Hassan Ibrahim, is going to be talking about the youth and fake news. Today's episode is going to be interesting. Don't go anywhere. But before then, let's go to the street. So, we we'll see what our people they talk for street. So, are they come? <laughs> I never go. Because me, I don't used to lie. So, I don't know how it's like. But if you say the, you say the truth, but the person used to lie, you know, because of, you, should, you should skip. When someone skips, you know that someone is lying. If an educated person sees a fake news, you should be able to detect. Just like when you say the president is dead. At least you know that for the president to be dead, the only person who could confirm that is the spoke person. Since if you haven't heard from the spoke person, you don't have them. Yes, from the first impression, and uh, there, are some, there are many people, by looking at their face, you see an incredibility. And there are so many people, by looking at them, you know that whatsoever they carry along is a fake. I will, I will know if the person lies for me. I will they look you as they talk to me. I will look how your lips they read and how your body they move. If they lie, I will know through the word me they talk for your mouth. Welcome back. You see where people talk for street so? Now let me talk. Um, you, you, see, you see yourself? Join the conversation. What do you think? You, what do you think about that topic mm? from the streets? Lend your voice. Use the hashtag fake news show or stop fake news. Tweet at us at CDD West Africa. Or if Nami you want to tweet at, I go answer you at Frank Donga underscore. So very quickly now, let's go over to our next segment of Let's Talk. We are going to have a conversation with Al Hassan Ibrahim from CDD West Africa. He's a program officer uh, and is very knowledgeable in this topic we're about to discuss. What do youth have to do with fake news, rumors, gist, when no pure, and lamba? Mo go check them out. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Fake News Show, segments of Let's Talk. You know, Let's Talk. And we'll be talking. Who are we talking to today? Program officer, CDD West Africa, the person of Al Hassan Ibrahim. He's here with us to talk about this issue of youth and fake news. Why? What's the correlation? Al Hassan, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Are you a youth? That's what some people tell me. I think mm. so. Okay. From okay. the evidence on hand. Evidence on hand. Yes. Because with all this beer, beer, I've been saying, say... No, it's okay. just hiding. Okay, now also, okay, package it is. Uh -huh. So, why, let's start this way. Why are people, why do you think people are attracted to misinformation and disinformation? Why, why does rumor spread? Why, why be saying, nah, nah, hot gist, we're not true, nah, in a quick trend? I, I think... Well, on the one hand, it's obvious we like things that are exciting. Mm. Like, do you not like to be excited? Uh, <laughs> exactly. So we all like things that make us, um, you know, think in a certain way or okay. push us in a certain direction. Something that is interesting to you. And fake news always targets that spot. It targets that thing that is, maybe it's not like exciting in a just normal way, but it's definitely 
like uh, it's sensationalist. You know, it will make you feel angry or it will make you feel like this this group is terrible. It will make you feel hatred even. Powerful emotions, it inspires that. And those are the things that we are drawn to as people, as human beings. It's a psychological thing. Do you think we generally love bad news and, or we love bad news about people we don't like? Or we take bad news from anywhere, even if it's, people, if it's a friend of yourself? Because mm. I'm saying it because you get some people we don't talk, say, if people will be your friend, we think say be your friend. Before mm. you know what's going on, you're just from them, that you confided in them. You know, would I move from one place to another place to another place? You get something to happen for Brick Brother and Niger. You know, say, ah, this person told this person something. That one went to go and tell this one. The way, because every person's best friend has another best friend. Mm. I don't know. I think that's something funny about human beings. So even gossip, gossip travels, gossip moves. The juicier it is, the better. Mm. And I'm sure if you ask people, do you like bad news? They'll say no. But if you look on their Facebook or if you look on their Twitter, what are they sharing? Mm. It's often stuff that is probably a bit more negative. It's not just calm, happy, positive stuff. Of course, that one is there too. But like generally, we just like to share things that are maybe a bit more... I have the shock factor. Like, exactly. hey, hey, you mean I'm... Um, exactly. Because I, I see a lot of that when it comes to uh, scandals. Mm -hmm. And that's why gossip... Infidelity, those kind of news. Yeah. Uh -huh. They spread gone. Yeah. That's why we like... If you see the top Niger like websites, it's always about gossip <laughs> and celebrity. Ah, I do... Hey, somebody was talking about it, the most searched things by Nigerians on Google when I saw the list. Is it PG or non-PG? Uh, it wasn't also much about PG or non-PG. Some of them were, were, were non-PG, oh, right? Okay. Very non-PG, by the way. I don't know what that is. Neither do I, okay. you know, but <laughs> since we both don't know, things that people search most on the internet were well, things that had nothing to do with additional value to them. Mm. Well, just random stuff like, you know, I was wondering what, why do, why do people want to know so much about bad stuff, you know? And so this issue of youths and fake news or misinformation, mm -hmm. is it true that youths are the ones generally that are the peddlers of misinformation and disinformation? Well, in this country of ours, what isn't the fault of youth? What have we not caused? If mm. you look at, uh, I remember I saw this video by this uh, design, this Nigerian who was talking about Nigerian youths and how they should stop uh, doing whatever it is she thinks they're doing, which is very ironic. Okay, you're talking about the former Minister of Petroleum yes. and the video that she said uh, Nigerian youths were picking role models from as uh, fraudsters as role models. Uh, and I would like to ask her, so if fraudsters are role models, what are politicians? Hmm. I think you should ask her. Well, I don't know. It's an open question yeah, because you, what do you call corruption you then? And if those are our role models, mm. why are we always attacking youths? Why are we attacking young people for doing the things that our leaders and our politicians are doing? Is that not what we are taught as young people to follow the example of your leaders? But well, they believe you should take your future in your hands. They believe that you are the leaders of tomorrow. Don't yes. ask me for the date of tomorrow. I have no idea because... Well, tomorrow of, will never come. Well, some Maybe. of them have been telling you tomorrow since, you know, you were born. And you were, when, you, when our parents were young, they were their leaders. Mm -hmm. And they told us, don't worry, you guys are the leaders of tomorrow. We are still, we are like parents now, so, you know, and they are still the leaders. But hey, what, what uh, so, but, so when it comes to using technology mm -hmm. for information and education, maybe because they seem to see many youths in the forefront of it. Well, I think that's natural. New technology will always be adopted by young people faster than they are by any other generation. So that's just a natural correlation. Now, if you're going to talk about whether it is young people who are using it more negatively, I think that's a question we can investigate. And some of the things we've seen, for example, in our state elections, when they're running online hate campaigns, disinformation campaigns, they do use young people. And there are many reasons for that. One, we have a extremely low employment rate in this country. So you have a large proportion of youth who have no jobs, no hope, nothing to do. So a politician comes and says, I'll give you 5,000 every week, every month. All you have to do is uh, push out uh, information about me and bad information about that person. So they're being exploited. So in one sense, they are victims. And now if you're going to blame them and say youths are the ones engaged in all the bad behavior, we have to be balanced. Hmm. You have to ask questions, well, why is this happening? Who is funding it? Because the youth aren't the ones who have the money in this country. 
and nothing in this country happens without money. Hmm. Wow. I mean, straight up, what I want to know now is, so how, 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 how do we even recognize this misinformation? Because now you've established that most times, you know, like what you said from your professional experience, it is this uh, older generation that employ the youth to use the new technology to propagate most of the messaging at times. It's not mm -hmm. always that the, the misinformation comes from the youth themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the, it's the money bags, it's the, it's the older generation who are responsible for the decadence we see you know, as role model, that are actually, you know, using the victims themselves against And themselves. they are just transposing. So, for example, when you go to elections and there's electoral violence, you think these thugs are there because they just want to be there. Mm -hmm. They are financed, mm -hmm. right? So they are moving this model onto the online space. And they are now financing youth to continue engaging in the kind of electoral malpractice that we've been seeing for a long time. So we have to be very balanced when we interrogate why are youths doing X, Y, Z. I mean, youths youth don't hear them for Nigeria. We, we've been called a lot of things. We've been accused of a lot of the things. We've been called lazy. They've been accused of picking role models from frosters. You How know. can a youth be lazy when you have to work probably three jobs just to make enough money to survive? What's our minimum wage now? Minimum wage in Nigeria? Now. Now, yeah. not 30k. And uh, they've increased it to 30k. How much do you spend on fuel every month? Are you asking me? Generator alone. If you have, if you have fear for your month or fear for your better pass money, bro. Because especially the way they collect 30k, I know it's better saying get G wagon or Benzo. Well, of, of course. I better pass money, well, you probably spend close to 500 to 1000 every two days on a better pass money, bro, depending mm -hmm. on how much you consume. You know? So that's like minimum 5000 per week mm -hmm. on the average. Mm -hmm. So if that continues, they say you get log, you get light, maybe. Out of a month, you get like two straight weeks. Mm -hmm. So like 10,000 of your salary, you don't go for petrol. You never come out the one for our strength for that month. Oh. Mm -hmm. You never come out for feeding. Oh. Network. Mm -hmm. oh. And if your head comes strong, you can't save money, go buy phone, way past your level. Law enforcement people can't buy you for outside. Say mm -hmm. you, you use iPhone. Or you can't say, maybe you pimp yourself. Maybe you look fresh. You can't go do dreadlocks. Nah, that's story entirely. Youth have heard it from yes, being called on manner. We agree. We we'll take a short break now. When we we'll come back, now you smart with the talk. If you are used, don't run away. After this break, how to identify all these things and keep yourself smooth without being a criminal. Now we go talk. Stay close. One, two, three. Now I can send this story to my brother. He must share it with my mother. What are you sending to your aged mother? Come and read. I found these stories on the internet. Wait. Did you verify these stories to be sure they are facts? Verify. Why? Have you not heard that it is important for you to always verify stories by doing these five before sharing them? Five things? That's too much for just one story. First, check the headline if it's sensational. Check the new sites that publish it to ensure it's credible. You double check to make sure the same piece has been published by other credible media organizations. Oh, really? Yes, check the dates the story was published and finally seek experts' opinion and possibly advice on the report. Wow, I will quickly verify these by checking the headline, date, source and seek experts' opinion before I forward them to my brother and mother. This message is brought to you by the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD. You should only share information from credible sources. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Fake News Show. I'm your host, Frank Donga. And you know, this episode will be talking about youth and false information or misinformation and disinformation. You call it fake news. So, youth and fake news. Is there any correlation? You know, youth have been blamed for a lot of, for a lot of things. Called lazy, fraudulent, that they're picking um, uh, bad influences from celebrities as role models, picking fraudsters as, as role models. Some people say the youth are just a victim in this whole game. How true is it? We have Al Hassan Ibrahim, program officer from CDD West Africa, here with us. He's a youth, from what I can see. <laughs> and we've been discussing. Mm. So now, Al Hassan, mm -hmm. how can you recognize when information is being shoved down your throat, either from the civilian angle or as a citizen or from leadership? How can you, what are the steps to you know to verify information? Um, I think the first step is probably yourself, right? How? Um, so on the one hand, if you understand that, now there's a certain level in which uh, I spoke about how young people might be exploited, but that's not the only sense in which you can understand things because at the end of the day, we're free agents with our own free will and we have critical thinking as human beings. So on the one level, 
you actually start to look at things and maybe ask yourself some questions. Like, when I read this message, is it because somebody else wants me to hate a group, hate one group or hate another group? I think that's probably the first and the most important step, critical thinking. And we're seeing that now. I think the uh, Minister of uh, Media, uh, I forgot the exact name, is talking about implementing critical thinking into school curriculum. So I think those are the kinds of steps. And he's a young guy. Hmm. So I think we can also talk about youth as bringing innovation. Because hmm. at the end of the day, we're the ones who are working with the new technology. We, have, we understand the kind of potential it can have in positive ways. Are there tools that one can deploy to maybe identify when information comes away to see? Because you mentioned something very important, you know, the critical thinking. What's the motive behind this information? What's mm -hmm. the source? So what are the practical steps you can take to verify those information? I mean, there's some very simple things. I think um, many people have spoken about basic fact-checking. So in terms of like photo verification, you can um, upload a photo that you've seen onto either Google Images or Tenai. Those tell you, it shows you what the original image looks like. So to, to be practical on that, mm. we might assume people know it and they might not know. Some people are just watching this show for, show for the first time. So you, you, if you see a picture or maybe WhatsApp, somebody sends a picture to you and say, ah, this is the carnage that just happened in my street. Mm. Or this, in this uh, riot in Kano or Lagos or Abba. See pictures coming through. What do you do to that picture or WhatsApp? Well, very simple. On your phone, you can just do a reverse image search. How? If you go to Google, Mm -hmm. and go to Google Images, you can upload the picture that you received on your WhatsApp. There's an upload button on Google Images. There, there is an upload button. And you just select the picture and it shows you the most likely where that image came from, To unless that image does not exist online. And then you might think, okay, probably an original image uh, if, if there's no other instance of it. So those are like some very simple things. Okay, interesting. What about uh, this new thing with young people? with a deep fake? Yeah, it's something that like is developing, it's been slowly de developing for a while. And if you look, if you look at, the, at the big picture, things like voice modulation software has been around for years, yeah, for it, decades. People use right. that in music, in movies, yes. even so, deep fake, you know, special, special yeah. effects. It's now happening in videos. So there are now very simple tools, software on your phone that you can take a video of yourself probably put the image of a celebrity on there and you look like them. We've seen some popular ones with Obama. Uh, I think there are a couple with Trump and just like very famous people. Hmm. But it's possible Recently now. there was one with Don Jazzy. I haven't seen that one. Oh, there was one with Don Jazzy. I think we put it on his page where they put his head on a couple of bodies, you know, and, and yeah, I saw mm. that. Yeah. So now, of course, we now start thinking of, so what are the negative implications now? Mm. So we already know there's fake news. So what will now happen if you want to implicate somebody and you create a video using a deep fake and showing them doing something. You know, that is very mischievous. That is... I think it actually happened to a musician, if I recall correctly. I might not mention names, oh, but okay. she was... Uh, there was this rumor that mm -hmm. she had a, an adult tape out, you know. Oh. Yeah, and it was false. It was totally false. It was somebody, I think an adult entertainer who looked mm -hmm. like her, and it was very depressing for us. She went through a period of you know. uh, yeah, okay. So imagine what they can do if they can pick a video clip from a, 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 you know an adult uh, site or mm -hmm. source. And then put your face on it. Watch do it. people even want to know whether it is true or not? That's not a problem. It's, it's a potential problem. Because everyone just wants to carry this and laugh your laugh and go. But now, let me bring you back two years ago. I'm sure we all remember that story that Buhari was from Sudan. Right, mm, it, yes. it, it trended for a very long time. Why did it trend? If it trended for a number of reasons. One, people felt like maybe there was no trust or they did not know what their president was doing. Fair enough. In fact, the first time he actually responded to that was in a press conference in Europe, a year after it happened. So then you now had space for the rumor to grow, to grow. I think if you are in a situation where People have some trust in you as a leader. They, there's that kind of openness. It's less likely for those kind of things to have a real effect on you. Great. I'm happy you mentioned the time period as we round up the interview now. Why do our leaders, or even as individuals, is it, mm -hmm. do you think it's a smart idea? 
to wait for a long period of time before you debunk false information about you or about your work or your credibility. Is it is silence always better? Is it uh, is it uh, this thing we say mm. um, about silence being and foolishness? It's complicit or something. No, no it is something like let's remember. Let's remember. It's like uh, silence is the best answer for a fool. Uh, is that a smart thing any longer in this in this period in, in this, this age? In this like, period, <laughs> maybe it's a bit dicey. So I'll quote a lawyer friend of mine who said that if in your presence a lie is spoken and you are silent, it means you are giving your tacit agreement to that lie. Hmm. He says that if a lie is being spoken about you and you are there, respond immediately. So it might not always be a smart idea if there's an allegation or accusation that is very false and you just say, nah, then, Sabi, let me just keep quiet. And you say absolutely nothing, you might actually be fueling misinformation about you more than doing good. In some senses, I think now, you know, there are some cases where you think, you might not question what's the best move. If it's like a rumor in some tabloid that after one week, in no one is way. even talking about it, you can just let sleeping dogs lie. But if the thing keeps growing, keeps growing, then I think there's wisdom in responding. Do you believe that the, the leadership in Nigeria needs to talk more and engage more with the youth, especially with the view to not allowing silence and gaps in communication to, that would breed suspicion, lack of trust, and rumors and fake news? Yes. And they, when they do communicate, it has to be more than slogans. We know hmm. of not too young to run. But look at the average age of politicians in our country. What does not too young to run mean? Well, yeah, they, they, those guys ain't exactly too young. So, yeah. you know, yes, it's good for them to talk, but sometimes substance also matters. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to Al Hassan Ibrahim on the youth and misinformation, and yes, we delved into a bit more other things that were important. You know, finished for the year, after this break, bang bang, go gone happen. Don't go anywhere. You are still watching fake news show. Yes, fake news is something that is not genuine. Are you recording? Hello, hi. They say some people, people are spreading fake news all around. Some of you, you receive a WhatsApp blockers message before you know you have, you have, you have received it. You did not verify information. Some people even put it on blogs. Spreading fake news. All the, all, all the. You think it's right? That's what you are doing. No, you think that thing as you are, as you are spreading the fake news. You think you are doing, you are doing right thing. Stop spreading it. You should stop it. Resist that uh, temptation that will make you spread fake news. You verify information before you post it. Rubbish. Cut. I need to cut. Cut the video now. What happened? Am I not the one do it? I said I finish. No cut. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Fake News Show. And we just had a conversation on the use and uh, fake news connection or mystery or accusation. You know, it's back and forth. Youth, social media, fake news. The youth are spreading fake news. They're always the one on social media. Uh, is it true? Is it only the youth? Are they not victims? Are they victims? Are they not? You had a conversation with Al Hassan Ibrahim from CDD West Africa. And this is why we all have to take responsibility for what we send, the information we pass across, the information we spread. Is it true? Is it genuine? Is it honest? Have you verified it? You might not be responsible for what comes to your phone, but you are responsible for what leaves your phone. Confirm that information before it goes out. Take responsibility. CDD West Africa fact checks. If you have anything you want to fact check, tweet at us. Send us a message. Take a short break now, and CD West, CDD West Africa will show you one or two fact checked news items. Let's see what they have to tell us. CDD fact check report. Fake news alert. Did NCDC spend 1 billion naira to send COVID-19 messages to Nigerians? NCDC never spent 1 billion naira on SMS to educate Nigerians as claimed by screenshots circulating on the internet. According to the center, the SMS is part of the contribution of three major mobile network providers in Nigeria. CDD urges members of the public to verify every information before sharing, especially those relating to COVID-19. Welcome back. You see, I'm so. You see why it's not good to just carry rumor and join the bandwagon? CD West, CDD West Africa just showed us things we thought were true, but they are not so true after all. Misinformation here, disinformation there. Nah, you see? So, 
We thank you for joining us on this wonderful episode of CDD West Africa's initiative of Fake News Show. Again, next week we have another interesting package for you. Not go anywhere. Same time, same station. Come back. We will talk. About. What do you want us to discuss? Send us a message. Lend your voice to the campaign. Take responsibility. All right? And stay out of trouble. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Initiative of Center for Democracy and Development with support from USAID through the National Democratic Institute.